obsidian, quartz, topaz, and a ceramic composite. Water jet hardness challenge. We have items ranging from the middle of the most scale, ish at six, all the way to the top. The most scale, isn't that the guy from The Simpsons? No! If this gets out, the next words you say will be muffled by your own butt. The most scale is a comparative scratch test to determine how hard a material is. So it goes from a one to a 10. One being talc and 10 being diamond. And how this works is we have a material, topaz, that is an eight on the Mohs scale. And we have quartz, which is a seven on the Mohs scale. So this topaz can scratch the quartz, but not the other way around. Boom, scratched. So obsidian is about a six, quartz is a seven, topaz is an eight, and this is a ceramic that we don't really know what it is. But we know that this ceramic is harder than an eight because the topaz... It actually wears off the topaz, the scratch. It's not here and it's wearing a flat spot on the topaz. This is from a wear plate on a conveyor that was transporting rock and gravel. Yeah, it's... so this is the hardest thing that we've ever had to cut here. As you can see, this has already been somewhat cut, but more chiseled off by the water jet. So for being only an inch thick, it took way longer than it should have. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and go right through the center of a couple of these ceramic nubs. Cylinders. Cylinders to see how, how hard it actually is. Obsidian is the softest material that we have, so we're going to start with it, and we're going to use it as a baseline. Our water jet doesn't have obsidian as a setting. It's got a bunch of granite, and then it's got silica, which obsidian has a ton of silica in it, so we're gonna try that. Cut the obsidian, and then we'll run the water jet at the same speed and same rate over the other three materials and compare how much damage is done to each one and see if we can kind of see that progression. The most scale is a scratch test and the water jet essentially is just scratching its way through whatever material it's cutting. Water jet uses a garnet abrasive to scratch its way through whatever material it's cutting. This gets added into the water right before it comes out of the nozzle and that's what actually does the cutting. And that is a perfect cut. We had the speed just right. That is our baseline. So now we're gonna throw up all the other materials on here, cut them at that same speed, and then compare the amount of damage and the cleanliness of the cut. So in order for the test to be accurate, in between each item, we changed the thickness to the height of whatever we were cutting, but kept it going the same speed, which means this was as if it was cutting through an inch and a half of silica. This was like three quarters of an inch of silica. This was inch and a quarter silica. The obsidian is a pretty freaking clean cut. The quartz, it's you can clean see the curves on there, but yeah, they're on the right side. You can see where the water jet trails behind a little bit, and a little it's a little bit of a rougher cut. So, on a water jet, usually when you cut something too fast, the cut quality just diminishes, and we can kind of start seeing that there. The topaz is way harder, and we only got maybe a quarter of an inch into it. Ceramic, we're probably a sixteenth of an inch in. Now, the most scale is not a linear scale, but it's also not a true logarithmic scale. From what we were able to find, it is a near logarithmic scale, which means each time you go up a number on the scale, it gets exponentially harder, right? Uh, yeah. 
which would explain why we were able to cut all the way through this one and not even get halfway on Topaz, which is just one level higher on the scale. And then just to be 100% sure and scientific, we're gonna give this to Mitchell's new lick test intern to see if uh, that piece has actually been cut all the way through. That was not cut all the way through. He's right. Oh, okay. <laughs> so now that we've learned enough, we just wanna cut through something that's really hard. So we're gonna slow it way down and see what exactly it takes to get through this. Finally made it through, although the bottom of that cut looks really bad. So we started out at inch and a quarter tungsten, which was about uh, 0.32 inches a minute, but that was way too fast, and I had to slow it down to 30% of that, which came out to... It's about a tenth of an inch per minute, and so that would take 10 minutes to cut an inch which lines up about right. This was like 14, 14 minutes to cut. So that is crazy how hard that stuff is. But the water jet did it. It did it. It looks terrible, but it did it. And that's what counts. So for like good cut quality, we'd probably have to go like even, what would that be like 10 times slower? This would be what we call like worse than 100% cut quality and they go all the way like 20% is considered really good, 20% speed. So you'd want to go 20% of this to get a decent cut quality. So it, it would essentially take you five times longer. So it would take you 50 minutes to do an inch if you wanted good cut quality. But because the material has varying hardnesses, at $2 a minute, that bottom side is always going to look cost you $100 out. per inch. At $2 a minute, it would be like $100 per inch. <laughs> <laughs> if you flipped it and cut the steel side first, then you'd get a clean air on the steel and you'd blow out on the on the on, on this the side. side. But you're already starting to get a bad cut quality there. On the ceramic, just yeah. Just through the you know the top layer. Ceramic is hard. That's the moral of the story. So all the things in the comments that you said were really hard is not as hard as this. Um, we are actually going to hand this over to Mitchell's new lick test intern. Can you uh, tell us if that's been cut? Yeah, it's cut through. No, oh no, I see. No, 